his name, there is but one God. That's right. That's some right. call him Jehovah, some call him Yahweh, some call him Elohim, some call him Amen or Amen Ra, some call him Baba, some call him God Almighty, some call him Father. In, in the nation in Islam, we call him Allah. That's so right. By saying the word Allah, the base word of Allah is in English the word all. So when you say Allah, you're saying all of the names of God. Right. Jehovah, Yahweh, Elohim, Father, God, Lord, Jesus. Whatever name you call it, you're saying all of them wrapped up in one. Yes, sir. So we thank Allah, that one God for his messengers, his warners, his prophets. We thank him for the minor messengers and prophets that have come. The theologians say that there's been about 24,000 minor messengers that have come up in the world in the last 6,000 years. And we thank him for the major ones that we know their names and their revealed word that came through them. A man like Moses mm. with a revelation like the Torah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A man named Jesus with a revelation called the Gospel or the Injil. Yes, sir. A man named Muhammad and a revelation of the Holy Quran. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We thank Almighty God, Allah, for all of these messengers and these prophets and the revealed word that they gave to us to help make us better men and better women on the planet. In this case, better just better men for us in this room right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I am a student of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And as his student, I am eternally grateful to Almighty God, Allah, for his merciful intervention in our affairs in the person of a man named Master Father Muhammad. The man that came 9,000 miles all by himself to come and teach the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and black people in Detroit and all over the United States of America. And I thank him for raising up the example of what manhood looks like. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. The most fearless black man that ever trotted the shores of America or any part of the planet. Okay. I'm talking about a Georgia-born black. Georgia-born. That's black right. Man. That's, That's right. right. Maybe y'all don't know about a Georgia-born black. Maybe that don't mean nothing. Yeah. We are we in Savannah, Georgia? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you mean to tell me that inside of Georgia was the material? that could produce a man that will become the greatest man that we've ever seen on this side of Calvary. Mm. I'm talking about the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, a Georgia-born black man. Yes, 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 and we thank the two of them today for blessing us with a man that is the excellent exemplar law in this modern dispensation of time for what a man should look like. That man that I'm speaking of is the man that taught me everything that I know. Yes, sir. And is the example of the man that I hope to one day become. I'm talking about the fearless, divine, general, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Yes, sir. And I am pleased to announce that, inshallah, God willing, in a few weeks, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan will be turning 86 years of age. Yes, sir. He's looking good. Yes, you see him in his Hustle's funeral. He's sounding good. Yes, sir. And I'm pleased to announce that he's in good health. Yes, sir. And in good spirit, ready to keep his foot in our enemies behind. Yes, That's right. Yes, sir. And can't nobody put the foot in the enemies behind like Farrakhan. That's, That's, right. That's right. We thank Allah for him. Yes sir. yes, sir. I wanted to ask if you all would give a special salute to Brother Jamie and the believers here of the Savannah Study Group for putting this event on. Let's give our brother <laughs> and all of the brothers that shared words uh, earlier today to get us prepared for the program. Thank you, brothers, for what you said. And hopefully what you gave to us as men will inspire us and motivate us to be better men today than what we were yesterday. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And better men tomorrow than what we were today. Yes, sir. And if we can just keep that gradual increment increase becoming a little better every day. Yes, sir. In 365 days of a year, that will be 365 minor changes. Uh -huh. 
-huh. that would add up to become a major change at the end of every year. Yes, yes, sir. In 10 years, we will be a completely new creature. That's right. As men, if we can just make that little bit of pride. Thank y'all for listening. I greet you. <laughs> That's all you need to know. But brothers, it's a very serious situation that we are faced with as black men. Yes, sir. I don't know if you know this or not, mighty men, but in America, there are more black males born than there are black females. Mm -hmm. But by the time the two reach the age 18, Black females outnumber black males seven to one. Wow. Wow. This means by mathematical computation that the black male is dying at the rate of an endangered species. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, you know what happens when white folks see animals dying right. and going to the point of endangered. They start organizing programs. Right. Yes, sir. Campaigns. Yes, sir. Right. Telethons. Yes, sir. Um, I don't know if y'all remember, but right around the time when, when Trayvon Martin was murdered by George Zimmerman right down the street in Florida. Right. That's right. Black people, we were in an uproar, and it came, the hashtag out of that time came Black Lives Matter. Yes, sir. Right. But, but right around the time of the murder of Trayvon Martin, Cecil the Lion got killed in South Africa. Right. right. What? That's right. You're telling it. And white folks, you know, they modified our black lives matter. They try to put something in there called all lives matter. Right. Yeah. Which is true. All lives do matter. Yes. Yeah. But whenever we said black lives matter, just a remedial reading lesson, we did not say only black lives matter. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. That's right. But we were saying black lives matter because it's obvious by the way we are handled by the police. Yes, sir. By the way we are treated in the court system, yes, sir. by the way we are dealt with inside of the system of education, by the way we are handled at the bank when it's time for us to go get a loan. Yes, sir. You you do know you do know that that racism is is a system now, not 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 an individual person like it was. That's right. 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 So don't ever get blinded by the fact. <laughs> that you don't see skinheads with swastikas stickers wrapped around their arm or clan outfits marching through Georgia. Every now and then they still do it. That's right. right. But our great brother, whenever he was leaving the Supreme Court Thurgood Marshall, his first lecture he did at Howard University, listen to his words. Here's a man that's been looking at court cases that happen all over America. Listen to his words. He said, I want to let you all know this, brothers and sisters, that the Ku Klux Klan no longer wears white robes. No. They wear blue police uniforms That's right. and black judges' robes. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what was he saying? He said they've become the Blue Klux Klan. Right. Right. Y'all didn't catch that. Yes. <laughs> We can upgrade it and say that, that not only does the Ku Klux Klan wear black judges' robes or blue police uniforms, but they also wear white doctor smocks. That's right. right. That's right. Is that right? Yes, That's right. right. They wear three piece suits and they sit in the position of bank managers. Yes, That's right. right. Yes, they do. So when we said Black Lives Matter, that was based on the fact that, that there's been two to three thousand black males killed by police officers or correctional officers in the last three years. That's right. And only four police are in jail for killing two to three thousand black people. Mm. That's right. Mm. We said Black Lives Matter because when you go to the bank, that same bank, black man, that's right. That'll give you a two hundred fifty thousand dollar loan for a plastic house. Right. Exactly. You know I'm telling the truth. Yes, sir. Right. That'll give you a hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan to give your child an education that will not work. Mm -hmm. That'll give you an eighty five thousand dollar loan for an Escalade. Right. Yes, you go to that same bank that gave you that loan for that Escalade for that college education or for that plastic house and ask them for a small business loan. Right. Uh -huh. And the same bank, you say, I just need 10000 they'll tell you no. That's right. Why? Because they know that a degree does not threaten white supremacy. No. Right? Oh, no. Mm. Driving a fine automobile doesn't threaten white supremacy. No. That's right. And living in a big house with a four-bedroom, a home, and a, and a four-car garage doesn't threaten white supremacy. No. Right. The, but the minute... Yeah. 
that black men say that I recognize that business is the activity of life. That's right. right. And we will never be a free and independent people because as long as I'm trying to pass on a job to my son. Yeah. But when we get involved in business, that's right. That's Go right. ahead. Yes, sir. Business is warfare. That's right. That's right. Not black talk. And it lands a blow against our enemy whenever you begin to engage in economic enterprise. That's right. Yes, sir. Is this the truth? Yes, yes sir. sir. All the way. So when Cecil the Lion was killed, yeah. <laughs> they went from all lives matter to all lions matter. Mm. 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 That's right. And I started looking down the timeline. Of all of these people that were posting hashtag Cecil the Lion. Yeah. And as you went into their profile, I noticed that they had love for the koala bear. Yeah. Love for the blue whale. That's right. Love for the bald eagle. Uh -huh. That's right. Love for the white tiger that's going right. extinct, but no love for the black man that's yeah. going extinct. That's mm -hmm. right. So if we are dying at the rate of an endangered species, we researched it and found that whether it's the koala bear, the bald eagle, the blue whale, the white tiger, there has never been any creature in existence that's become endangered unless that species is in fact being hunted. That's right. Mm. right. So if there are more black males born than black females, but by the time the two reach age 18, black females outnumber black males seven to one. Somebody's hunting us, black man. That's right. right. That's right. And I'm sad to announce that the real death that comes to us as black men is not coming from the blue police to the inside. Mm -hmm. It's not coming from the white man to us. It's coming from us to one another. That's, That's right. right. That's right. And I want to say to the men today, as you see the great soldier, the great prince, the great young general, Nipsey Hussle just leave us. Yes, we have to stop killing one another. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Because when you kill a young black man, you are involved in the assassination of the future of black people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said this. He said... That knowledge of self produces love for self. That's right. Mm -hmm. And if you love yourself, you will do for yourself. That's yes, right. right. That's right. He said you can stop all black on black murder, black on black crime, just off of giving black men a thorough knowledge of self. That's right. That's right. Because once you know yourself, you begin to love yourself. That's right. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? Yes, sir. Have you noticed that 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 white and black children, when they go to school, they start school the same way? Go ahead. Yeah, if you ask, ask, ask your, 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 uh, your queen what happened whenever she dropped her baby off for daycare that first time. And then you go ask a white woman what happened. Whether it was a white child or a black child, the first day that they got dropped off at school, both the white and the black child grabbed over and held the mama's leg. Yeah, that's right. If you are a father that took your children to school, which is something you should do. Yes, sir. You remember that first day of school, they grabbed your leg. They didn't want to go. They cried. That's right. That's right. And when you peel them off your leg, or your queen peeled them off her leg, and your son began to walk, you looked over and you seen the little white boy, or white girl, walking the same as your son. Mm, that's right. Both the white and the black child walking real timid. That's I remember right. this. Yes, yeah, I remember it. Moving real slow with their head down. That's right. Crying and sniffling. Yes. But notice that as that black and that white child began to trick or matriculate through 12 years of the public food system, yeah. public school system. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Notice that, that, that as they began moving through the school, they're both being fed the same curriculum. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the curriculum inside of the public school system has always been about white greatness. That's right. So our babies and their babies learned about George Washington, a white man. Mm -hmm. right. Thomas Edison, a white man. That's right. Abraham Lincoln, a white man. Yes, sir. Einstein, a white man. Yes, sir. Newton, a white man. Yes, sir. Columbus, a white man. Yes, sir. Plato, Socrates, Hypothagoras, Thales, all white men. That's all right. Old. And you notice that as they both began to move through the school system, that, that the white child began to stand yeah. upright. Yeah. Yeah. And by the time they graduated with their diploma, they no longer had their head down moving slow. They were moving fast with their chest out, head held high, ready to conquer the known world. That's right. But our babies never learned about somebody that looked like them. Right. So whenever they left the school, not only was their head down, but now their pants was down too. Yeah. Mm. But if 
our black babies would learn about people that look like them that accomplish great feats in the past. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then they too will leave inside of that curriculum with that same power to conquer the known world. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Don't you keep on protesting and begging the school board no. to change the curriculum. That's right. Every city we've been going in, Brother Wayne, they, and this is our Brother Wayne that has the Ashford Tea Company. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right down at 406 East Oglethorpe. Go and get you some good tea from your brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The philosophy of black men from this day forward in Savannah should be that if business is warfare, Right. And if I open up a business, I have struck a blow against white supremacy. That's yes, right. sir. Yes, sir. Don't you want to see some blows struck against white supremacy? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't you want to see white supremacy destroyed once and for all? That's right. But if you got a brother that opens up a store and he struck a blow for white supremacy, wouldn't it make sense that we should bring our dollars down there to give him some more ammunition? That's yes, sir. Right. So go get you some tea from my brother. That's right. Sure. But every city we've been going in, whether it's been Savannah, they, they, in all of the inner city schools, we're noticing 10, 20, 50, 60 million dollar renovations of the buildings mm -hmm. that our school, our, our babies go to. Yes, sir. Right. And they do need renovation. Yes, sir. But I'm saying to us as men, don't let them make an acute building. Be good enough for your children. Because at the end of the day, the Titanic was much more attractive than the Ark of Noah. Right, right. Question is, which one would you have rather been on? That's right. <laughs> so if they got a high class system, a beautiful environment that makes white supremacy more believable. Right. Then hell, I don't want to see no $60 million renovation of buildings of schools in the cities. I want to see a $60 million renovation of the curriculum that our babies have to listen to. That's right. So as men, you got two to 3,000 black males killed by police officers or correction officers. That's bad. But in the same three-year cycle, on average, 25,000 black males are killed by other black males. Mm -hmm. So we can't say black lives matter to the White House right. and forget to say black lives matter to the trap house. Right. Mm -hmm. right. We can't be out there protesting white supremacy and then forget to check negativity. Right. Come on, doctor. What? I know that ain't no word in the dictionary, but y'all know exactly what I mean when yeah. I say that. Yeah. 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 Negati negativity is a special type of negative only black people know how to do to one another. <laughs> we got to check them both. Yes, right. They did a study on 60 Minutes, and you can check it out. It was on June 14th of 2014 to show you how powerful, if men stand up in Savannah, how powerful of a change you can produce in the community you live in. They had a park in South Africa called Pellensburg Park. In this area, there were a lot of elephants and they considered these elephants to be overpopulated. You know, that's white folks term all the time. And the solution to overpopulation is always that traditional George Bush solution. You remember George Bush? Mm -hmm. I remember George Bush, the first Donald Trump. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, right. <laughs> what? We was on the radio the other day. Uh, uh, bro, the, 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 the host said, he said, bro, what are we getting ready to do? We got two more years of this Trump dude in the White House. What's it going to be like? Hell, I said, it's going to be like the same as the last 400 yeah. years. Right. <laughs> right. We didn't have 44 other Donald Trumps before this one. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Trump ain't the first cracker in the White House. No. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Stop acting like George Washington liked black people. Yeah. Right. <laughs> If he, he no, if he liked black people so much, why was he such a slave owner and a rapist? Yeah, right. You don't believe he was a rapist? Yeah. You don't call everybody you know with the name Washington. Right. 
And I guarantee you, you say in America, the first white man that came, first Washington was a white man, call all the Washingtons right now in the phone book, and I guarantee you a black person answered the phone. That's right. Oh, yeah. Well, how did all the black people in America become Washington if the first Washington was white, unless the first Washington was raping all women? Right. Yes. Come on now. So, whenever George Bush seen any situation or problem, he was bloodthirsty. Yes, sir. Solution to everything just was to look. I'll tell you what, what they asked me, what, what are you going to do with the rebels in the Sudan? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go in there. We're going to hunt them down. We're going to smoke them out. And we're going to kill them. Okay, yes. But what, what do you plan on doing with the conflict in Afghanistan? Because it, it seems to be getting worse and worse. The Mujahideen, what, and the, what, what are you going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go in there. We're going to hunt them down. We're going to smoke them out and we're going to kill them. Right. Mr. President, uh, we have a high, high school dropout rate in America. Children are dropping out. 50% of 16-year-olds are dropped out of high school. What do you think? So, tell you what we're going to do. We're going to hunt them down. <laughs> Can't do that to the children. <laughs> but the solution to, to all white people in power has always been to kill. That's right. The white man is the only group of people on the earth whose history is not written in ink, but written in blood. That's right. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said they've only been in existence on our planet for 6,000 years. And in that short little window of time of 6,000 years, they've killed 600 million original people all of the time they've been on the planet. Yeah, right. Every thousand years of existence, they've killed 100 million black people. Yes, Their history is written in blood. Yes, That's right. You do, you do know, black man, that you're the first man on the planet. Yes, sir. You do know that you are the original man. Yes, sir. You are the Asiatic black man, not the African black man. Right, right. Not the American black man. Right, sir. And definitely not the African American black man. Where in the hell is that on the map? <laughs> in the middle of nowhere? He's on that. And you better not call yourself no Afro American. What, what people name themselves after a hairstyle? <laughs> you are the Asiatic black man. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said the whole earth used to be called Asia. That's right, right. sir. You're the first man on every part of the planet. Yes sir. yes, sir. I don't care where they dig. Whenever they dig and find white people's bones, they never go beyond 6,000 years of age. That's right. Go and Google a man named Louis Leakey, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. an anthropologist that was studying the origin of man, and he believed in the Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, and the white supremacist uh, education, and he went to Europe and started digging. Every bone he found of white people was 6,000 years old or younger. Right. right. But he found in Africa bones of black men and black women 10,000, 15,000, 50,000 years of age. That's right. And he did the process of inference, deduction, and reasoning and said, well, wait a minute. By the law of reasoning, logic, and inference and deduction, if I'm in Europe where white people live and I'm finding black people's bones older than white people, then maybe I should go where black people live. Right. Yeah. Right. And when he went to Africa and started digging up the bones, he found bones millions of years of age. Yes, sir. Right. The oldest bones that he found were the bones of a black man. Right. And when he found this black man's bones, he named the black man Zenjanthropus. Yes, Zenj in Greek meaning black. Yes, right. Anthropus yes. meaning human being. Yes, right. Zenjanthropus, the oldest bones of the oldest man that Louis Leakey could find, is the bones of a black man. That's right. right. Okay, y'all don't believe me. Only about three of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> We all, we've been on the planet for trillions of years, black man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why do you think when Armstrong, a white man, yeah, talk about when he got to the moon, talk about that step. and they planted that flag, mm. the American flag. Yes, sir. And for the record, just a footnote, we look crazy as hell as men. Getting real aggressive and excited when we see a Confederate flag. Mm. But getting sentimental when we see an American flag. Yeah, right. Do you know we caught more hair under the American flag than we did the Confederate flag? That's right. That's right. right. 
The Confederate flag only flew for about 11 years. Yes, sir. Hell, the American flag been flying for 450 years. That's right. Last I checked, whenever the police arrested your nephew, he had an American flag on that uniform. Yes, right. Yes, Last I checked, whenever your, your, your cousin went to court for a nonviolent crime and got 50 years in prison, that judge had an American flag behind him. That's right. That's right. Everywhere we've caught hell, the American flag. Matter of fact, if you look at the Confederate flag and the American flag, they really are the same flag. They just organized differently. Yes, Both of them are red, white, and blue. That's right. Both of them are stars and stripes. Yes, sir. So don't get don't, don't get sentimental and emotional. When one come and get mad, when the other one come, they're both the same. That's right. right. Y'all right? Yes, yes sir. sir. When Armstrong planted that Confederate flag. <laughs> come on now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The original Confederate flag. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The one that slavery suffered and death was under. Yes, sir. And when he got to the moon, listen to his language. He said this was one small step for man. Yes, sir. And a giant leap for mankind. That's what oh, said. That's right, that's right, man. Why are you, why are you playing with the language, mm, Mr. Right. Armstrong? Right. Suppose. What is the difference between the man and the mankind? Come on. Yes. Sir. How is it a small step for this one called man? Yes, sir. Right. But it's a giant leap for this other category of creature called mankind. Yes, sir. Right. Don't you know that if you take the word mankind and invert it, mankind means kind of a man? Yes, yes sir. sir. He's telling you it was a small step for us because we've been there and done that. Right. That's right. Why? Because those craters represent where the water from the earth used to sit. That's right. That's right. When they brought back the samples of the rock, Mr. Armstrong said that it smelled like gunpowder. Yes, sir. That's right. mm. Small step for me. Yes, sir. Because we had been there and done that and walked on it for trillions yes, of years. Sir. Yes, sir. But since white people only been on the planet 6,000 years and they are the kind of a man, That's a right. copy That's of right. the original, That's right. it's a giant leap for them. That's okay, right. first time being there. Yes, sir. Oh, great. Sir. Yes, sir. Well, whenever the, the elephants began to overpopulate, quote unquote, they came in there with a George Bush solution inside of Ellensburg Park. And they came and dropped bombs. They picked up all the young from Ellensburg Park, helicopter airlifted them and dropped them off in another park called Kruger Park. Destroyed all of the adult males that they could kill in Ellensburg Park. Then a few months later they came to Kruger Park where all of the young were living there without their parents. The story is called, on 60 Minutes from June 14, 2014, the story is called The Rogue Elephants. Mm, they consider all the young that were in Kruger Park to be juvenile delinquents. Wow, that's right. In Kruger Park, the young that were there without their mother, without their father, all of a sudden, they began fighting and killing one another. Mm, that's right. Elephants have a history of being very peaceful. Yeah, right. right. With other animals, including them, and of course themselves. That's right. The animals, the elephants got lazy. The men just laid around, the women laid around and got unhealthy. They stopped taking care of the young, nursing their young. Next thing you know, they looked up and found that the rhinos were being murdered. They thought that there were poachers coming in. Come to find out, after video on us, it was the elephants attacking all the rhinos. Mm, that's right. They began to stop down key aspects and ingredients of the ecosystem of Kruger Park. Next thing you know, the whole environment was messed up. It went from, from being a peaceful place, kind of like a paradise. It went from paradise to the projects. Mm, that's right. It went from, oh, excuse me, I'm talking, never mind. And when they seen that the whole ecosystem of Kruger Park was messed up like it was in Pellinsburg Park, they came in and said, we got to do something about it. What you think they said? Kill them, Kill them. Kill them all. <laughs> That's it. One scientist raised his hand and said, well, well, hold on a minute. Before we do that, I have a proposal. Just can we just try something? 
And what, what he proposed they did. They went back to Pellinsburg Park to see if they could find any remaining adults. And they found nine adult male elephants still alive. They helicopter airlifted them from Pellinsburg Park and dropped them off in Kruger Park with the young, the rogue elephants, the juvenile delinquents. Right. And within two weeks, the elephants stopped killing one another. Mm. Yes, sir. Within two weeks, the women got up and were moving around with joy, taking care of their young again. Within two weeks, all of the ecosystem of, of Kruger Park became back in the harmony. Back. I'm saying that to say, what would happen if the black man stands back up? Yes, sir. that's right. In our community. Yes, sir. Now, we don't need to be helicopter airlifted. We already here. That's right. right. That's right. But for every physical law there is in the universe, there is in nature its spiritual counterpart, so teaches the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. That means anything you see physically, you, there's a way that you can study it and figure out how to take those principles and convert them over to the spiritual. Mm -hmm. We were talking to my brother right here yesterday. This is Brother Sadiq. He's a great basketball player who played professional basketball overseas in Argentina. Yes, sir. He likes it. He loves the sport. He trained hard for it. But he said after he was been over there for a few years, he said, I want to come home and work on building a nation. That's right. Woo. Did y'all hear that? Yeah. I don't know about you, but at any time that I can meet a young black man, that's right. Do you know that, that the primary target of our enemy is to capture the minds of our young black men? That's right. That's right. That's right and destroy in their brain hopes, dreams, and aspirations? Yes, sir. The number one objective of our enemy is to snatch the dreams from the new generation. Yes, sir. To kill the spirit of the new generation. Yes, sir. To make them operate in a sense of hopelessness and despair where they cannot run their leg of the relay. Mm -hmm. But whenever I heard of a young brother that, that's just uh, in his early 20s saying, and I will forsake money in my pocket for sport and play to come and do something to help build a nation for my people, I think that deserves to be respected and saluted. Yes, right. What do y'all think, Jack? Man? I told Brother Sadiq, I said, Brother Magic Johnson, and my brother Wayne here that has a tee shop, he also played professional basketball overseas a few, a few years ago, <laughs> a few years back. But I told Brother Sadiq, I don't know about y'all, I like Magic Johnson. Y'all like him? Yes, sir. He got a little bit more testosterone, spiritual testosterone, than most of the brothers that's up in, they got some wealth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You seen how he just quit the other day, didn't you? Oh, yeah. He said, look, man, y'all know, what is, did y'all hear it like I heard it? Yeah. I heard it, the, the other side of, look, these crackers in here is giving me hell. Right. Sick of these sneak-ass little white boys always trying to be slick. Right. Every time I do something, they act like they agree in my face, and then they go and do something different. I'm done. Right. I don't need this little punk, little money from this little Laker team. Anyway, I'm more valuable to the Lakers than the Lakers are to me to hell with them. Right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I maybe I didn't hear the story like that. <laughs> that was my remix on it. Yes, yes, sir. I chopped it and screwed it. That was the way I was gonna see it. <laughs> but Magic Johnson said a few years back they invited him to speak to the developmental league and to the rookie camp. And they asked Magic Johnson what would be the number one hope that he would have for this new generation of athlete coming up. He said, my, my, my goal in coming to talk to these brothers is I want to show these young brothers how to take the brain they built in basketball and use it for business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He never was invited back again to speak to them again. <laughs> you know why? It's a threat. Because that's a threat yes, sir. to white supremacy. That's right. I watched the dunk contest 
uh, uh, a few months ago, last month, a few months ago. Man, them, can't nobody do it like we can do it. That's right. right. I, re I remember one year, little Nate Robinson, he's only a few inches taller than me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dwight Howard's, and man, that brother's tall. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think he's 6'12". <laughs> <laughs> he's tall as hell, <laughs> big brother. I seen little Nate come down, and, and this was the last dunk of the dunk contest. Anybody that's ever played sports, you know the more you jump, the more fatigue your legs get. The last dunk of the dunk contest, Nate then jumped over top of Dwight Howard's head with flair and dunked. <laughs> I see my brother uh, that plays in Houston. Can't remember his name. But he jumped and he put a cupcake on the rim. He jumped up and blew the cupcake candle out. <laughs> and then dumped on the way down. Man. You remember Blake jumped over a whole car. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But at the end of all that, <laughs> Black people's conditions, uh, condition to change not one hour. That's right. That's right. So no matter how many points we score, no matter how much dunks we do, no matter how much entertainment we offer, it does not impact white supremacy. That's right. But if these young athletes were willing to take the brain they built in basketball and use it for business, now we got something, black man. Yes, sir. So I'm asking for you as a father, Train your children the way white people train their children. White people don't put their children in sports the same way black people put their children in sports. Tell it. When we put our children in sports, we put them in the sports to become a professional addict. Right. But when white people put their children in sports, they put their children in sports to extract the principles from it. Right. Mm -hmm. So that the minute that they don't make it, white children to the NBA or to the NFL, right. they know how to follow the law of transmutation. Mm -hmm. And they apply the principles of teamwork, right. discipline, That's right. sacrifice, yes, working through pain, working through fatigue, the ability to categorize problems in their personal life and still do the mission at hand. Right. And they use it for their law firm or for their doctor's office or for their insurance company. Yes, sir. But because we train our babies that, that, that you're going to make it to the NBA, you're going to make it to the NFL, and you're going to buy mama that car, you're going to buy mama that house, and the minute that they don't make it to the league, now their hopes are crushed, their right. dreams are assassinated. Yes, sir. Come on, man. But if we put our children in the sports and told them, look, if you can go into the league, that's cool. But know this, son, there's 500,000 black boys playing high school basketball right now. Mm. Out of that half a million black boys playing high school basketball, only 35,000 of them are going to play in college. Out of the 35,000 that play in college, only 7,000 of them will get a full ride scholarship. Out of the 7,000 that get a full ride scholarship, only 35 of them will make it to the NBA. Wow. Out of the 35 that make it to the NBA, only 7 of them will get a starting job. Wow. And the 7 that get a starting job's career will be an average of 7 years. Mm, that's right. So don't be no sucker. That's right. And be, no, be one of the 500 million people competing for 7 full time jobs. That's right, man. Get in there and if you can get the free scholarship, the free education, take it. Yeah, that's, right. that's right. Get in there and if you can make it to the NBA and get you some chips, stack it. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. But at the end of the day, if you don't get the scholarship and you don't make it to the league, so what? Extract the principles from it. And take that brain you built in basketball, son, and right. use it for business. That's right. And let's take over our community and make it something Y'all see, I ain't looked at my notes yet, but the law is the best now. That's law right. My assignment today, and I'm going to wrap it up. My assignment today is the masculine mandate. Come on now. The seven traits of a real man from God. Y'all all right with that? Yes, sir. You know what a mandate is, 
right? Yes, sir. It's a command. Yes, sir. It's an order. It's an instruction on how one should act and carry themselves in certain environments. Yes, sir. We, we need a new mandate. What y'all think, black men? Yes, yes sir. sir. Well, there was a sister once that I was watching a question and answer exchange between the public and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and a sister asked a question via Twitter to the minister. Listen to her question. She said, how will I know a real man when I find one? Mm -hmm. Wow. I said, oh, man. It's a hell of a question. Yes, yes it is. You know what that means? Whoever she was, she haven't met a real man yet. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because if you'd met one, you wouldn't have to ask the question. That's right. That's right. That's right. right. So I was assuming that this is probably a young girl who's on her way to mate selection and wants to make sure that whoever she gives her hand in marriage to is going to be the kind of man that's going to bring out the best in her. Did y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me tell you something, brothers. The most important decision that you will ever make in your life after choosing to believe that God is God is the person that you call your wife. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The mate you choose will either inspire you to grow into your greatness or they'll confine you to complacency. Yes, sir. They will either be your other half or they'll make you half for yourself. Yes, sir. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes, yes sir. sir. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said a good relationship will bring out the best in you and make you youthful. Mm -hmm. And a bad relationship will bring out the worst in you and age you prematurely. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You got to choose wisely, black man. Yes, sir. So when this sister asked the minister a question, I'm assuming that she's got to be a young girl on her way into adulthood making sure that she doesn't stumble and make some of the mistakes that she's seen some of the others make. Lo and behold, I went to Los Angeles, California, and after I did the lecture, I broke this down on Father's Day, and the sister came up to me and said to me, she said, you know, I'm the one that asked the minister that question. Okay. I was happy to meet her, but I was sad that she was over 50 years old. Yeah. I didn't say nothing to her, but I walked away and I thought, I said, so you mean to tell me for 50 years you've been on this planet? Mm -hmm. A half of a century. Right. That's right. And you still asking the question, how will you know a real man when you meet one? Yeah. That means that she's been running into a lot of boys in men's body. Yes, yes, sir. Right. She's been running into a lot of, of males, but not a lot of men. Yes, right. And there's a difference between a male and a man. Yes, sir. There's a difference, brothers, between a, a daddy and a father. Yes, sir. A male, all you have to be to all you have to have to be a male is a penis. Mm. That's right. But to be a man, you've got to have the ability to think more than with your little head. Right. Mm. Y'all ain't catch that. Sir. Exactly, sir. You got to be able to think with your big head. Right. Easy to be a daddy. All you got to do is know where to put it. Right. It don't take nothing for you to know where to put it. And after you put it, sperm does the rest. You don't have to think. Right. right. But a daddy is a man that knows how to bring a child into the world. Yes, sir. But a father is a different than different from the, from a dad. A father is one that knows how to train that child. Yes, sir. How to successfully navigate in the world that he brought him into. Yes, sir. There's a difference between a daddy and a father. A big difference. Yes, That's right. Whenever the minister answered her question, I thought it was going to be a real long answer. You know, you know, that's how we think wisdom is. We think wisdom is when you take something simple and then you put a whole lot of word gymnastics with you and, you know, yeah. get involved in all kind of yeah. spiritual pontification. Yes, sir. Hither thou goeth and whither thou cometh and thus saith yes, the intergalactic cosmic order of the chakra <laughs> of the twelfth dimension all has right. come in harmony and alignment with the atmospheric harmony. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you do what the hell you're supposed to be yeah. doing. That's yeah. right. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Simple as that. Do what you should do when you should do it, whether you feel like doing it or not, you're going to be all right. Yes, sir. Make it simple. 
So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad once was asked a question. Brother wrote him a long question about his addiction to cigarettes. What? No, no black people still smoke squares? Yes, sir. <laughs> Sir, it might be something in this room, but I guarantee you, I got something that you don't need no science. I just got one thing that you can think about every time you bring like that cigarette that'll alter a black man from ever smoking a square again. Y'all ready? What's that, brother? You got your seatbelt on? Yes, sir. <laughs> Do you know that when babies are born, white men and white women have always celebrated white babies being born by smoking a cigar? Yes, sir. That's right. The cigar is the emblem of the black male sex organ. That's right. Yeah. So they smoke a cigar because they wouldn't have been able to produce a child if we didn't produce them. <laughs> so there's a way of paying homage to us without us knowing that they're doing it. So if the cigar is the black man, y'all see where I'm going with this? Yeah, we see. And what is this little big skinny little white cigarette? <laughs> Huh? Change the game up, don't it? That cool ain't as cool as it used to be. That Salem menthol ain't as great as menthol as it used to be. And every time you light that cigarette, not only is it fire on one end and the food on the other, but it's something about knowing that I'm putting a white man's Johnson in my mouth. Wow. Make it easy for me to say no to smoking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What y'all think? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so the Honorable Elijah Muhammad got this long letter on how to break the habit, and the, 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 the Honorable Elijah Muhammad answered him after he asked, How can I quit smoking? What should I do? He was expecting he was going to tell him to take this herb and drink this, and at a certain time meditate and do transcend. Uh, he, he, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, Just quit. Right, right. <laughs> That's what it is. If your mind is made up, just, just do it. That's right. See, oh, one of the characteristics of a real man is your yes is your yes. Come on. Man. And your no is your no. That's wow. Right. Yes, sir. You mean what you say. That's right. And you say what you mean. Yes, sir. That's, that, that's one of the, the marks of a real man. A, a, a real man's word is bomb. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, "In bond is life, and I'm willing to give my life before my word shall fail." So, so the way of a real man is when you put your word out there. The only way you don't fulfill your word is if you're dead. Yes, sir. Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm saying to us as men, one of the main reasons why we're not as successful as we should be is we do too much dabbling. Mm -hmm. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Soon they get a little hard, we punk out and quit. The Bible says it like this, whatever thou findest thy hand to do as a man, do it with all your heart or all your might. In other words, don't play with it. That's right. If you got your mind made up and you say you're going to be, do or have something, throw your whole self at it. That's right. That's right. I got a, I, my, my, my way of doing things, I don't, I don't make to-do lists. I make a battle plan. I hate that. And when I write down what I have to do for the day, I don't call it a checklist or a to-do list. I call it a battle plan. Come on, brother. It's something about the way it does your mind when you think battle plan versus to-do. Yes, sir. To-do is real negotiable. Right. To-do is if I can do it, if I can get around. But battle plan, see, when you in warfare, it's life or death. Right. And it's something about in your mind saying, this is my battle plan. Today is my mission. I'm on a, I'm on a, I got a, I got a goal in front. I got to make it happen or I'm going to die. Yes, sir. yes, sir. See, a real man, you got to have your mindset made up that I don't write my goals down in ink. I write my goals down in blood. Yes, sir. <laughs> and when you write your goals in blood and make a battle plan, not a to-do list. Anything you say you're going to do, you're going to make it happen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all yes, all right? Yes, yes sir. sir. So, my brother needs somebody. Yes, sir. You all right? If, we don't, if, don't, if you don't need nobody, don't move around. So y'all distracted me. Now, what was I talking about? We need $5,000 right now if we can just get two people to get five. That's not what we're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Good request, though, wasn't it? <laughs> but, brothers... Black men, your battle plan, goals, battle plan, not to-do list, yes, sir. write your goals in blood, not in ink, Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. throw your whole self at what it is that you're going to do, don't doubt it, and watch you make it happen. Yes, 
Yes, that's yes. right. So, when the answer came from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, quit smoking, just quit. The answer from the Honorable Minister Louis Farquhar, what is a real man? How do I know one when I meet him? Guess what he said? He said, sister, just study the Lord's Prayer. That is a description of an ideal man. You didn't hear that. How many of us, matter of fact, I only got to ask, all, I guarantee you, all of us have said the Lord's Prayer at one time or another. Yes, yes sir. However, look at what the minister is saying. He's saying the Lord's Prayer is not something that we recite as a request to throw in outer space and wait for a ghost God to do something for us. The Lord's Prayer has in it, well, the seven traits of an ideal man to give us a masculine mandate. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How does the Lord's Prayer start? Our Father who art in heaven. Because some of y'all went to Sunday school. <laughs> well, if heaven is up, the principle is that a real man is someone that is looked up to. That's right. As a man, you have to operate in a way where your women and children look up to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is in the nature of a woman to want to equal herself up to a man. Mm -hmm. right. And it is also in the nature of a woman to test a man. That's right. Yes, <laughs> and whenever a woman begins to test you to see how strong or how weak you are in different areas of life, whenever you compromise, when you punk out, when you make an excuse, whenever you operate as less than the standard bearer, mm. then you let her down. Yes, That's sir. right. So a real man has to be a man that is in heaven that, that our women and children can look up to. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Women cannot look up to a lazy man. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Am I telling the truth? Yes, yes sir. sir. You interview any woman, and they are more concerned with work ethic than the wealth you possess. Yes, That's right. If you work hard, you always be admired by your woman, even if you don't make as much money as she makes. Yes, That's right. Now, don't get me wrong, brothers. I'm not saying That's just right. to be to be you know shadow boxing all your life. That's right. That's right. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes sir. Shadow boxing, you in there swinging and nothing. <laughs> you sweating. You tired as hell, but you ain't hitting nothing. Yes, right. sir. We don't want to be shadow boxing in life. We want to actually land some blows. Yes, right. sir. Make something happen. Yes, yes sir. sir. So, so, so money is not the primary stat of life. Mm. But it is important. Yes, sir. Yes. It might not be the points, but it is the rebounds. Yes, sir. The assist, the block shots, it's the, it's the, it's, it's the complete pass. Is this something? Yes, sir. You got to have some money if you're going to make it. That's right. That's right. That's right. The motto of a real man should be this. If you woke up broke, you had no business going to sleep. That's right. Ooh. Ooh. That should be your motto. That's, That's right. right. If I woke up broke, I had no business going to sleep. See, black man, you cannot have a million dollar dream and a minimum wage work ethic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever type of dream you have, you got to make your work ethic match that size dream. Yes, Otherwise, you're sitting around waiting on a mystery guy. That's right. That's right. You're waiting on some ghost from outer space. Yes, right. Some divine piece of wind to swoop down and perform some magic trick and hocus pocus shazam make yes, everything all right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Breaking news for you, there is not going to be no great magic show from heaven. Yes, sir. The Lord of the Worlds is not going to come wave a magic wand and all of a sudden Shazam, white supremacy goes away. Right. Yes, sir. He's not going to reach behind your ear and pull some money from behind your ear. <laughs> if the black man is going to have anything, be anything, and do anything, it's going to be because we call on the God of the universe. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. ask him to infuse the God in me. Mm. To go to work to bring about that which it is that I desire. That's right. That's right. So whenever you are a real man, you are a father who aren't in heaven. You're looked up to by the women and the children. Y'all right. 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 right? Yes, sir. 
What next does it say? Hallowed be thy name. A man's name is his reputation. That's right. Anybody, wherever you live, we should be able to go knock on the doors. And if we're looking for you, we should just be able to describe you. Yes, sir. And when we describe you, your neighbors should, as soon as we describe you, we should see a smile come on their face. That's right. Yes, That's right. And then after they smile about the one we're looking for, if you're a real man, if your name is hallowed, if you got a good honorable reputation. Yes, sir. After they smile, they should start reciting all the good things that they know about you that you do in the neighborhood you live in. Yes, sir. So if I'm looking for you, they should and knock on my door. As soon as I say, I'm looking for uh, a brother, a brother John. He's a, a tall, tall, dark-skinned brother, about 40 years of age. Oh, you talking about brother John? He lived about four houses there. You talking about the one that's always looking out for the children in the neighborhood? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You talking about the one that always gets everybody together to come and shovel the snow for the elderly in the wintertime and cut the grass and break the leaves during summers and spring? Yes, sir. You yeah. talking about the, the brother that be posted up at the bus stop making sure that, that even though he don't have no children going to school, he's out there when it's dark and the children are going to school to make sure no pedophile messes with our babies? That right. brother, John? Yes, sir. That would be Thy name, that's your reputation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your reputation is the manifestation of your character in the public. Yes, sir. Mm. Go ahead. And if you got a gift, and, it, and, and inside the container there's a crack, then over time the, the gift is leaking out. Yes, yes sir. sir. It's only a matter of time before the gift is gone. That's right. right. So if character is the container, the, the container has to be solid. Yes, sir. Our character as men must be solid. Yes, sir. Right. We have to be men of integrity. Yes, sir. You know what integrity, the reason, reason, integrity and honesty are two different concepts. Mm -hmm. Honesty is telling the truth. But integrity is living the truth. Yes, sir. Come, Come on. The base word of integrity is integer. Yes, sir. Integer means one. Yes, Ooh. sir. Whenever you have integrity, that means that you are the same one person all the time. Mm. That's right. Whoever you are in public, you're the same in the private. Yes, That's sir. Right. Yes, sir. Y'all all right? Yes, yes sir. sir. And you know you got a whole lot of fake people out here now. That's right. You look on social media, you swear they're doing it. <laughs> Meet them in real life, they ain't done nothing. Yes, sir. That's one of the great dangers of social media. Yes, sir. Is that you can actually be something before you really are something. Mm. <laughs> That's right. Uh, maybe I experience Yes, sir. Right? We with you. Yeah, it's just so far. I saw it. Right. Some, some people don't even own the clothes. They just trying them on, taking a picture. They didn't even bought them. Wow. That's right. They yes, sir. just tuck the tags and then act like it's theirs. <laughs> <laughs> they pull up at the mall and find the nicest car and lean on it. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> And they put a big quote about how much the haters have been hating. <laughs> the moves that they've been making. <laughs> Lean on the Bentley. Come on, man. You know, in good and well, you got an 89 Ford Focus around the corner. Yes, sir. Two door, only one door work. <laughs> but a real man is a man of integrity. Yes, sir. Hallowed be thy name. That's whenever your yes is your yes, your no is your yup. No, you mean what you say. You say what you mean. Your word is bond, not blind. <laughs> blind is weak. Mm. Blind is recessive. Yes, right. Blind is strong. That's yes, right. When you say you're gonna do something, you make it up. That's, That's right. That's right. right. Y'all right? Yes, yes, sir. That's two. That's two down. Two traits. Hallowed be thy name. What else? Thy kingdom. Come. Thy Real be done. Thy what? Real be done. Thy will. So a man is a, a, a real man has willpower. Yes, sir. A real man doesn't just doesn't wish for things to happen. They will it to exist. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A real man doesn't wait to feel good to do good. Mm. A real man does good to feel good. That's yes, right. Sir. No, listen, brothers, you, you and I are made in the image and the likeness of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did you hear that? Yes, yes, sir. That means that everything that's true about God is true about you. Yes, sir. If you're in the image and likeness of God, that means when God looks at you, he sees himself. Yes, sir. Our problem is when we look at ourselves, we don't 
don't see God. If you're made in the image and likeness of God, you're not a you're not a duplicate of God. You are a replica of God. That's right. If you are a duplicate, you will be made in the image. That's the outside. Yes, sir. But you're not just made in the image, but you're also made in the likeness. Right. That means you look like God on the outside and on the inside. Right. That's right. You are a replica, meaning that you are a one that has the power and the function mm -hmm. of what you are a copy of. Yes, sir. Okay. That's right. Anything God can do, you can do. That's right. 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 Psalms 82 verse 6 says, Ye are all gods. That's right. Children of the Most High God. Most High God. We're children of the Most High God, which means we're underdeveloped. We're children of the Most High God. We haven't we reached our full potential yet. Yes, sir. But don't tell me that a son that hangs around his father that does heat and air condition every day won't become proficient in HVAC. Right, right. Don't tell me that a son that hangs around his father that does pipe fitting and plumbing won't become proficient in plumbing someday. Right. right. Don't tell me that a son that hangs around the, the, the business entrepreneur father won't learn the laws and principles of business as warfare one day. Right. right. Well, if you and I are hanging around the word of God and the way of God and the will of God, it's only a matter of time before the children become just like their father. That's right. right. You can do it, that, man. That's right. oh, please. Please. The goal of religion really is not belief in God. Hey, oh, I didn't need religion to believe in God, neither did you. Certainly. <laughs> Is that the truth? That's right. You believed in God before you ever went to Sunday school. That's right. You believed in God before you ever got baptized. That's right. You believed in God before you ever wrote your letter, before you ever recited your shahada. That's right. You believed in God long before you ever visited a temple, before anybody put oil on your head or tear it on you. You believed in God long before any, any connection to ritual. Right. We always right. believed in God. So, so if religion, all I'm getting out of this is belief in God, I don't need the religion. Right. Religion's goal is not to believe in God. The goal of religion is to become the God you say you believe in. Mm, yes, Otherwise, right. the religion is a fraud. Yes, right. The religion is fake. Right. The religion is false flag. Yes. Religion. Religion in Greek means to get to God. Prefix re. Religion is supposed to get you back into being God. Yes, sir. Right. Don't you want to be that again? Like yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, thy kingdom come, thy what? See, a real man doesn't sit around waiting on the spirit to move them. A real man gets up and moves the spirit. Yes, sir. When you got willpower, what is will? Will is the power that the mind has over its own affairs. It is the ability to put something out there that you want to do and to gird up every fiber of your being to achieve that objective. A man has to be a man of great will. Yes, sir. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and when you have strong willpower, you don't do a lot of rapping. Anybody work out at the gym? Do, do, do y'all have at the gym in Savannah people that do more socializing than exercising? Yes, sir. It happens here, too? Yes, sir. And I mean, you know, I'm on a schedule. I'm coming, I got to get stuff done, and y'all taking up the machines. Yes, sir. So you over there socializing, everybody looking in the mirror, checking out they self, trying to see who's pretty, who came in, and who got what. And then they out there talking and just constantly rapping. And, and we got a saying that we, we say to the brother, hey, hey, bro. Less rap and more rap. Right. <laughs> See, a real man don't do a lot of talking. A real man do a lot of working. That's, that's right. That's right. That's right. With his will. Yes. Give us this day our. Daily bread. Uh oh. Now, now tell me if it's the same in Savannah. But where I'm, where I come from, there's a whole lot of different synonyms for money. Mm -hmm. yeah. Scratch, scream, <laughs> bank, Smooth. cheddar. Smooth. Loop, chips, bread. cheese, guac. Bread. Yeah. What you say? Bread. Is bread what I'm here too? Yes. So if bread is synonymous with money, give us this day our daily bread. bread. Well, wait a minute. The white man's job don't give you daily bread. They give you weekly or bi-weekly bread. Yes, sir. The yes. only way a man can get some daily bread is if he's in business for himself. Yes. So if we're afraid of a real man, and we've got to be in business for ourselves. Find something 
you like doing, brothers, and start doing it part time. Until what you're doing that you love or like part time is earning you enough money that it can replace what you don't really want to do for your enemy full time. That's right. That's right. And the minute that you've made it to that level where what you do that you love part time is strong enough to replace what you don't want to do for your enemy full time, cut that white man off. All right. And go out there and get your daily bread. Yes, That's sir. right. Instead of the weekly. And my weekly bread. And Social Security getting some of your money. And FICA and county and all. Hey, who the hell are, who are these people anyway? You mean tell me you ain't gonna ask me, do I got enough money for diapers this, this week? And you gonna take my money off the top? Come on. Give us this day our day. A real man does for self. That's, That's right. right. Y'all right? Yes, yes sir. sir. Next it says, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. trespasses. Forgive us our Trespass. 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 Some translations say sins. Yeah. Some translations say transgressions. Yes, Forgive us what we've done wrong. Yes, As we. Oh, wait a minute. See, a real man can't be petty then. <coughs> If we didn't ask the God to forgive us the way we forgive other people, then a real man don't have no grudges. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. A real man don't walk around with resentment. Right. Mm -hmm. Resentment is let somebody use your mind rent free. Mm -hmm. They occupy space in your own head. You live in an emotional prison whenever you are mad at somebody for something. That's right. Did you hear me? Yes, yes sir. Forgiveness. Mm. For means in advance. Yes, sir. To forgive means to give in advance of atonement. Mm. Advance of the apology. Yes, sir. Whoever offended you, they might not have even said that they did you wrong. They might not have apologized. They might have done nothing yet to make good on the bad. But at the end of the day, you are letting it go, not for the sake of them, but you're letting it go so that your mind is free mm. for all of your creative juices to flow. That you can be what you need to be and do what you need to do. That's right. So I ain't tripping on you no more. That's right. Real men are not petty. That's right. Next, number, I think it's six. Yes. And lead us not. Do you know how many of your fathers raise your hand? Tell me if I'm telling the truth. As a father, you don't want your children to be like you. No. Mm -hmm. You want your children to be better than you. Yes. Right. Am I telling the truth, brothers? That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes. Do you do you know why that the, the name of the man that that planted the sperm that produced the child? Do you know why we're called father? It's because the word father comes from the same word as father. Yes, right. In fact, father is the word father without the R in it. Why? Because the job of a father is to take the next generation farther. Right. Then what we went. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. So lead us not into temptation. A real man, a real father recognizes that children don't do what you say, but children do what you do. That's yeah. Right. That's right. So at the end of the day, you cannot make fatherhood 90% explanation mm. and only 10% example. Right. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Teach it now. I mean, let me give you this, this example. There's a philosopher named Ralph Waldo Emerson. Listen to what he said. He said, what you are is so loud, I can't hear a word you're saying. Wow. Mm. Come on with that. <laughs> so it, it does no good to have fatherhood manifesting 90% explanation. Mm. And then we only 10% of the example of what we're talking about. <laughs> It'd be better to not say nothing but just show something. Come on. Yeah, that's right. Albert Morabian, who's the great leader of linguistics, said that, that communication is broken down into three parts. Come on now. He said, he said only 7% of communication is words. Come on now. 38% of communication is tone of spirit. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. And 55% of communication is physiology. In other words, the way you act and the way you carry yourself. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So if 55% 
is the way you act and carry yourself and the other 38% is your spirit. Mm. Do you know your spirit, your tone is your atmosphere? Yes, sir. Do you know how the earth gets its atmosphere? The earth's atmosphere is six miles off the earth's surface. Yes, sir. The earth's atmosphere is a product of this planet weighing six sextillion tons, but spinning at the terrific speed of 1,037 and one-third miles per hour. Yes, sir. So it is the mass of the earth and the motion of the earth that produces the spirit and the tone of the atmosphere of the earth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it is, black man, it is your, your motion. Yes. The way you live that produces your tone of spirit. Yes. So at the end of the day, if the way we act is physiology and the way we act produces our spirit, then 93% of the way we train our children ain't in what we say. Mm. Only 7% of parenting, 7% of fatherhood is mouth. Yes, sir. The other 93% is the spirit, the tone, and the way we live our lives as men. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lead us not into temptation. Whatever you don't want your son and daughter to do, don't you be doing it either. That's right. That's right. Even if they don't know nothing about it. That's right. Because they can feel what they can't see. That's, That's right. right. That's right, sir. Because it's in your tone. Yes, sir. It's in your spirit. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's inside your atmosphere. They'll tell you, I can't put my finger on it. Yeah. Have you ever said that? But something ain't right. That's, That's right. right. Well, we want our children to come in contact with our atmosphere. Yeah. To know that daddy means what he says, says what he means. Right. That his word is bomb. Right. My yes is my yes. My no is my no. That, that I am an honorable man. I'm a man of integrity. I'm a man of principle. Yes. You don't have to hear me talk about it all the time. Watch me, son. Right. Oh, yeah. Watch me, daughter. Feel me. Right. Mm -hmm. And you'll know that I'm the real thing. Go ahead. Last but not least, and deliver us from evil. evil. That's number seven. Mm -hmm. The world we live in is wicked and evil as hell. That's right. Our job is to deliver our children from it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your mindset as a man has to be, I refuse to live my life in a way that my son and my daughter is getting ready to inherit the same hell that I inherited when I came on the planet. Yes, Whatever I had to go through in my generation, it's got to be easier for the next generation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if the, a man throws himself at matter, energy, space, and time to alter the state of the environment that we live in, called the hood, or called the house, or called the, the uh, savannah, or called America, or called the world, if we throw ourselves 100% at matter, energy, space, and time to change the environment, then we will be the ones that would have been able to say, I've delivered. Yes, sir. My son, I delivered my daughter yes. from evil because I made an impact in the world. Yes, sir. These are the seven traits of God of an ideal man. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. This is the masculine mandate. Thank you for listening. I greet you in peace. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
appreciate you coming. No, I hate it. One call, that's all. Yes, sir. Jamie has supported me a long time. He's been a little bit. Remember, you have to go to Long time soldier. Excuse <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>